presence be felt and known in the bread and the wine. May your presence be known in our lives as we reaffirm our faith today, remembering that you first called us into a life of faith in these waters of baptism. Bless us today, Lord, in this worship. Receive this worship as a blessing for you and send us out to be a blessing for all. Amen. mountains and the sea your river runs with love for me and i will open up my heart and let the healer set me free i'm happy to be in the truth and i will daily lift my hands for i will always sing up when you're looking down i could sing of your love forever Sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. Over the mountains and the sea, your river runs with love for me. And I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth. And I will daily lift my hands, for I will always sing of when your love came down. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love. Peace of the Lord be with you all. We share God's love, God's peace with one another this morning. I need children to come forward. Children, come forward. But it was really good. The quality was really good. Come on. Come on. Oh, Zion. Zion's all over, man. Where's a brother? Brother's wandering around here. <laughs> You know what? Church is all about ritual. Ritual. Can you say that word? We do all sorts of rituals in the church. Um, every Sunday we, we end the service with one ritual that's really important. Anyone know what ritual we end the service with that's really important? Eating. That's right. I'm thinking of the bread and the wine. You're not thinking of the donuts, are you? 
I think you're thinking of the donuts. No, I'm talking about the eating that we do in here, the bread and the wine, which is a super ritual, like the ritual we're going to remember today, baptism. And that's a super ritual, too. We call super rituals in the church sacraments. And rituals are just those things you do to mark when something special happens. So when two people get married, what's the ritual they have when they get married? Married, love, it's called a wedding. They have a wedding ritual, okay? When, um, when you get done with um, high school or college, what's the ritual you have? Graduation, that's right, you get a job. Man, you guys are full of joy today, huh? Oh, you have a graduation ritual. E even when people die, there's a special ritual. We call that, a f we have a funeral ritual. So there's all sorts of rituals we do, but in the church, there's two really big ones we do. One of them is communion, where we eat, and the other one's in the waters right here. And in the, com in the baptism, it's a ritual that starts your life in the church. This is the beginning point. This is where you begin to be a Christian. So most of you have been baptized, and in those waters, you started your life, and now you're going to spend the rest of your life, just like Pastor Carl, remembering what it means to be baptized. And while you guys are down in Sunday school, all of your parents and friends and everyone else who stays behind, they're going to remember their baptism today, too, and they're going to recommit to living their life of faith. Does that sound like a good idea? Yeah. I know. I'm way ahead of you now. Let's say a prayer. <clears throat> Thank you, God, for these kids and their imagination and joy. May we be filled with it, Lord so that we leave with that joy and imagination ourselves. Amen. Thank you. You can follow Miss Alicia right out that door right there, okay? Have fun. A very uh, special water song for uh, uh, a special music right now. And uh, we'll take up an offering receive good gifts during that.
gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Beginning in the first chapter, John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance and for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. You may be seated. Here, sir. Sir, I'm going to take this. I've, uh, I, I've never been one to, to look back. I'm, I'm always wanting to, to look forward, right? That the, the better things are, are, are often ahead of us rather than behind us. So that's what makes today's message uh, unusual for me, if not even heretical to how I, I live, because I, I want to start by saying <clears throat> that I've already experienced the best day of my life. The best day of my life was the day I was baptized, September 13, 1964, about a, a month after I was born. Pastor Carl Sater at Augsburg Lutheran Church in Toledo, Ohio, uh, baptized me with my parents and uh, my witness was my Aunt Mary, my mother's sister, uh, who was my godmother. And <clears throat> even though that day is not memorable in any way to anyone, it is the day that's defined who I am and who God longs for me to be. So it's a very special day that occurred on that morning in West Toledo. And, and you think about it, it, it's odd that a day that literally no one remembers. I, my mom struggled to remember what church it was at that I was baptized when I talked to her about it. it. That's not that weird, right? I mean, we do have really special days in our lives that we don't remember that well, uh, but that turned out to be a big transition for us. Uh, uh, one for me is another September 13th, September 13th. 1985, I, I, I was married. And I remember a lot about the reception, but I, I literally remember nothing about the wedding itself. Even though I've got tons of pictures and a, and a creaky old video that a, a cousin or somebody made with a VHS system that was pretty brand spanking new in 1985. The, uh, yeah, I, 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 I don't remember. And we've got, um, We've got some members in our church. We've got Al and Betty Smith that have been married 68 years. And uh, Egon and Ursula Carsonson that have been married 65 years. And, and, and they are pretty sharp, let me tell you. But I'm wondering if in the 1940s they can remember that wedding ritual that happened so far back. 
And, and you know, weddings and, and graduation days, births of children, um, uh, first days of jobs, and, and sad days, right? The, the, the day a divorce became final or a relationship broke up or, or we buried someone that's uh, important to us or we said goodbye to someone who moved out of our neighborhood when we were a kid or, or moved out of the state when we were an adult. All those days are transitions, and some of those days might be terribly memorable, and some of them you might not have any idea how they unfolded, but they all moved you from one place to another, and, and, and that's what baptism is. Baptism is, is, is that moment where we're moved from who we are to who God longs for us to become, and it doesn't matter as much whether we remember it or whether even the pastors remember it, because frankly... I don't remember too many baptisms that happened. I, there are a few that stand out in my mind. One of them wasn't mine. One of them was Pastor Thad's. Pastor Thad's first baptism was um, Gwen and Armstrong. Uh, and uh, she was about two, I believe, at the time. She was just up here for a children's sermon. And when she got up here with her mom and her brother, she decided once it got going that she didn't want to be up there anymore. And she started running around the chance though, and Dana was trying to get her, and Thad was trying to get her, I think he was throwing water at her to get, you know, get, get this thing done. And it was his first baptism, and I remember saying to him afterwards, they don't all go like that, honest. <laughs> you know? uh, but uh, yeah, and, and, you know, the ones I remember are the adult baptisms, uh, because we baptize children and babies, so usually adult baptisms are, are, are a little more memorable for me, and as long as keeping in my head. Uh, Bev Prater was baptized at um, uh, the Shelter House on, on Pet Sunday. We, we didn't have done Pet Sunday in a few years, but, but her, she brought down her parents and her family. They, she brought them up from the Cincinnati area, and they were all gathered around, and, and, and dogs were, like, roaming during it, literally drinking up the water that was slopping around on, on her baptism. I, I felt so embarrassed about it. Uh, not as embarrassed when uh, Jenny Clements was baptized. And she was baptized in the Fellowship Hall for some reason. I can't remember why we were worshiping in that hall. But when she was baptized, uh, she was dressed very nice that day, especially nice, and her hair was done up. And for whatever reason, I poured an even greater amount of water over her head than I normally do. And she just looked drenched, like, like when you race from your car, right, in the pouring down rain. I apologize for that, too. But, but honestly, most of our baptisms aren't that memorable. But they are memorable to the only one that counts, and that's God. Because God in our baptism has promised not to forget our name, uh, who we are. God in our baptism has announced who we have become, a beloved child with who God is well pleased even when we're not pleasing at all. God and our baptism has given us gifts, <clears throat> gifts that are exactly what our world needs to heal as God hopes that it heals. God and our baptism showed up, was present, and that's what makes it memorable, is that God remembers. And that's what makes it the best day of our lives from that day forward. And, you know, it wasn't, it's not just us that have the best day of our life. Jesus had the best day of his life on the day he was baptized. I, I mean, think about it. Matthew and Luke were the only two of the four people that are telling stories about Jesus uh, that even bother um, to tell us about the day Jesus was born. But all four of them tell us about the day Jesus was baptized. Because when they sat down to write those stories of Jesus in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they saw that moment as the transition of, of Jesus becoming who God longs for Jesus to be and heal this world. Right? And so when Jesus was baptized on that day, just like for us, God was there and spoke, beloved child, the Son father said I am well pleased the father said receive these gifts that Holy Spirit coming in a dove that landed on him gifts that are exactly what this world needs to be healed and saved 
And the thing about calling this the best day doesn't mean that all the days afterwards are sunshine and hugs, right? Because that's certainly not the case for Jesus. I mean, he, he had good days afterwards. A wedding feast at Cana, that sounded like a good day. Uh, uh, meeting Peter, uh, who would become his best friend, that sounds like a good day. Um, uh, a, a God moment on the Mount of Transfiguration, that sounds like a good day. But there were a lot of bad days, really, really bad days. There were 40 bad, bad days that immediately followed this baptism as Jesus wandered around in the desert with, uh, with only the devil for company. Uh, there was a, a bad day where he was kicked out of his little village of Nazareth because he wouldn't put them before other people. Uh, there was a, a, a bad day when, his, uh, when he had to yell at his disciples, the ones who he loved in order for them to understand what was about to happen. A bad day when his friend Judas betrayed him. His closest friend Peter denied him. Bad days in arrest, execution, torture. In fact, baptism complicated Jesus' life, and that sounds like an understatement. Baptism brought Jesus into a life of suffering. It brought Jesus out of those shadows. What was he doing for 30 years before his baptism? Think about it. Could he have stayed further in those shadows? Maybe become the best disciple of John the Baptist ever? But no. Came out of the shadows. Accepted the suffering and the difficulties that that baptism complicates. In order to heal this world with those gifts he received. In fact, even though baptism made his life more difficult, it made our lives a lot better. So that the best day of his life becomes an even greater day for us. And that's kind of the theme for all of our baptisms, I think. That our baptisms complicate and make our lives more difficult, <clears throat> but they should make our neighbors' lives better. <laughs> As our life gets more difficult, our neighbor's life should get better because we're called in the waters of baptism to get out of the shadows too, to not continue to live in the shadows. We become a child of God and no longer a child of man. A, a child of man could stay in the shadows and ignore the suffering and the hurt around them. It's not their problem. What can they do? They're only one person. A, a child of God out of those shadows can't do. A, a, a child of man can make a good, reasonable case why, they need, why they've earned this money and they don't need to share it, why they deserve this time off and don't need to do something else that's obligation for other people, why they need to make the most profit from the gifts that they've been given. A, a child of God can't make those arguments any longer. A, a, a child of man can hold themselves as the number one thing they need to worry about. A child of God is asked to worry about everyone else and put God number one, everyone else second, and yourself third. Our life changes in those waters. And it changes in a way that thrusts us into the world with open eyes. But we're thrust into the world with a promise, a promise from God that we are beloved, a promise of God that God will be pleased with us. Even on days when we are not lovable, even on days when we are less than pleased, God will remember our baptism. And God will give us exactly the gifts we need. Gifts that will help heal the community we've been called to serve in the church we work in. Gifts that will bring us joy if we use them, and gifts that will make our lives more difficult when we use them. In fact, it's because those gifts complicate our lives that so many people who have been baptized have forgotten it. They're the ones who have forgotten their baptism. It doesn't matter whether the pastor remembers or the, or the family remembers or the congregation remembers as much as it remembers was that person. You can count on God remembering those promises. You can 
we remember. So we need to say yes again to our baptism. Yes. I'm ready to be thrust in to take into this responsibility. Yes. And hear the yes that comes from God when we say yes. Yes, you are beloved. Yes, you are precious. Yes, you will receive gifts. Gifts that will make a difference in this world. If we don't say yes, then our baptism is simply a faded memory. It's, it's a yellowing picture in a scrapbook somewhere. A, a, a dusty archive in a basement of a church. But if we say yes, for the first time today, maybe, if you haven't been baptized, or for the hundredth time, we re-embrace this pivotal moment that was the best day of our life and start that journey one more time embracing the God who first embraced us in these waters If you are a, an adult who have not been baptized, I want you to hear this invitation to come. You know, come down to the water and be baptized today. Come have the best day of your life right now. When God calls you beloved child, tells you he's pleased and gives you these gifts of the world that the church needs and the world needs. And after you make these promises for the first time today, kneel at the altar and eat the bread of life that the very presence of God wants to serve you. Just let me or Pastor Mac know when you come forward that this is your first time at these waters. Because you only need to be baptized once. Because God never forgets that day, even if others have. For the rest of us who have been baptized, I want us to take this moment now to solemnly but joyfully make promises again to God. The same promises that we made or that our parents made for us when we were baptized. The best day of our life. So listen. Do you reject sin, the devil, and all the empty promises that the children of man make? If so, say, I reject them. I reject them. Do you promise to live your life of faith in the church? the body of Christ in our world. This means to come to worship, eat and be nourished by the meal that brings God's presence, and serve and support in all the ways that you can the ministries that God has called us to so that we may serve our community. If so, say, I promise to live my faith in the church. I promise to live my faith in the church. Do you promise to grow deeper in your relationship of God by honoring the Ten Commandments, seeking understanding the gifts of the mystery of the Trinity by looking at the Apostles' Creed and the other creeds of our church, studying the scripture, being a person of prayer, seeking to share God's love by loving your neighbor? If so, say, I promise to grow in my love of God. I promise to grow in my love of God. You promise to use the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the dove of peace that landed on you on the day you were baptized, in ways that help fix the brokenness of our creation, to generously share and sacrifice your time, talent, and resources so that others' lives will be better, to bear Christ's light burning within you and with the darkness that surrounds us, chase it away. If so, say, I promise to use the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I promise to use the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Please, everyone, bow your head. Close your eyes so nothing distracts you. And focus on the best that you can be for God, who called you a beloved child and promised to be pleased with you on the best day of your life. Let us pray for the church the world, and for all people, according to their needs, called and gifted to serve in God's kingdom. As I went down 
to the river to pray, studying about the good old way. And who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sinners, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sinners, let's go down, down to the river to pray. God, you know each heart in this room. You know the good, the bad, and the ugly about all of us. And yet you insist on calling us a beloved child. We give our greatest thanks for that gift, Lord. Make today the first day of the rest of our lives as we recommit or commit to you who we are and what we have. Help each of us be reborn as we feel the water poured upon us again to hold precious the best day of our life and the promises that were made on that day. struggling with relationships and marriage find peace help those who are grieving whose very bodies ache from the sadness they feel find peace help those who feel buried by debt or who month after month simply aren't paid enough for their hard work find peace help those find peace who are sick or ill especially Keith Reinhardt Kimberly Berry Meg Reidler Pat Speakman, Kay Morrissey, Nancy Levering, and others named aloud now. Help all of these lords rediscover the joy of being called a beloved child. each and every person in this room for your good in the kingdom to accomplish the works that we've been gifted to do. Bless us and Messiah in the ministry we are called to share. Make us rich with your blessings so we can be abundant in our sharing. Give us your presence so all may know in whose name we come. Share with us your presence now in this meal that we are anxious to eat. For in the night in which our Lord was betrayed, he took bread gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body and it's been given for you. And again, after supper, he took the cup, poured it for his disciples, and blessed it, and then shared it with them saying, this cup is a sign of the new covenant shed in my blood for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Feed us, Lord. Strengthen us so that we can trust the promise that you have made to us. That we are always beloved, always your child, always pleasure to you, even though we fail and fall away. Bless us in your waters. Feed us at your table. Fill us with your spirit today and always. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sinners, let's go down, let's go down. Oh, sinners, 
pray with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. <coughs> Amen. I want to invite everyone forward. If you <coughs> are being baptized today for the first time, let Pastor Mack and I know. If not, come forward for a blessing, remembering your baptism. If you're choosing not to be baptized today, that's fine too. Pray for us in your seats. Once you are refreshed at these waters, go up to the rail and kneel and be fed by the bread and the wine of comfort and love. Kneel at the rail if you're able, stand otherwise, and then walk and then walk back around to your seats. We'll commune by intinction this morning.
Let us pray. Lord, fed and nourished at your table, reminded of the promises that we've made today, send us out in the world to be promise keepers, trusting in the one who never breaks his promise, you, Lord. Amen. We had uh, two first-time baptisms today. With those two people, yeah, that's good news. <laughs> Would, uh, would, would those two people be sure to see me afterwards? The church is all about paperwork, and we want to get our, we want to get our dusty archives going well, too. Uh, uh, good service. Thanks for that. I, um, today, we, we've, got, um, we've got something special going on, not here, uh, not only here, rather, but at uh, Ramada Inn is closing on Broad Street and uh, Hamilton Road. And uh, they are giving uh, all their stuff inside to three charities. One of those is Joseph's Coat. So we've got like 30 people working right now uh, at, from East Point Church, from our church, from St. Pius Church, all gathering up all these uh, mattresses and sheets and, and furniture and TVs and everything else. So it's just an abundance for us. So uh, we give thanks for that. And uh, for our member, uh, Joe Gulling, who's a worshiper here at this service. I think he's not here because I think he's over there right now. Um, but he set that up with the property company he works for, so that's great news. Um, this week, as you're going away, uh, you could come here and eat on Wednesday night for a great meal at Messiah Night. And um, we had orange chicken last week, which was just really, really good with rice and uh, broccoli, and uh, it, was, it was a good, good meal. So I encourage you to do that. Come on Saturday. We're not serving any food, but there'll be great spaghetti here served by the Reynoldsburg Community Association. They are a volunteer group, uh, an offshoot of our Reynoldsburg government that supports the 4th of July parade, the Christmas on the town in December, and the Halloween uh, JFK party that got like 2,000 kids this last year. It was overrun. It's all volunteers that do that, uh, all people like you that give their time. Chuck Cochran, who's in this congregation, he, uh, he, he's an active leader on that group. And uh, they're going to have a spaghetti dinner here, homemade, homemade sauce uh, and homemade uh, balls, right? Meatballs, there you go. And uh, so uh, I think you can come and buy your tickets at the door, but you can buy them from Chuck right now if you want to and support the Reynoldsburg community, the hard work these people are doing. Uh, Euchre night is Tuesday night, uh, six o'clock, come and eat, and then they start playing cards around 6.30. Bring a lot of money to lose. It's all, it, it all goes to God eventually, so there you go. <laughs> and um, feels like there's one more thing that someone said, be, oh, I know, Janine Smith-Hughes, right here in the front row. If, if you haven't been part of one of the groups that's talked about what you're hoping for in a new associate pastor, then about 15 minutes after we get done, she's going to talk to a group of you in the Fellowship Hall. So, um, so gather around her. Janine, you want to stand up? Oh, you are standing. Uh. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so gather around Janine in the Fellowship Hall, and she's got like four questions to ask, and uh, she'll take notes. And we've talked to a lot of the groups, but maybe you haven't been one of those groups we talked to, and so we want to hear from you. So that's happening in the Fellowship Hall today after church. Why don't we have a blessing? Stand, please. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you all with favor and grant you God's peace. Amen.
drench my eyes and dry the stream still flowing casting down all waves and sin and guilt that overthrow me but if I Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen.